From the heart of the NCHC Conference, this is the NCHC IceCast with the Rink Live's Mick Hatton. Mick Hatton. Welcome to the uh, NCHC IceCast for uh, this week. We're heading into the last weekend of the regular season. And, uh, well, kind of twofold. Uh, Sydney Wolf has uh, got a big week ahead of her because she, she covers the the boys state hockey tournament and that is just a marathon for her for you know basically four days so i i wanted to give her a little bit of a break uh, in this tough week and then also uh you know we got a big uh, series here between st cloud state and umd and we haven't had a chance to kind of catch up with with matt wellens and matt uh also can kind of give us a lot of we, we can get pretty deep here with, uh, you know, just how things are going in the NCHC and, and where people are at and that sort of thing. And But, Matt, thanks for uh, taking some time here and, and chatting here. Yeah, probably sums up the state of uh, the Bulldogs season that it's taken uh, till the last week of the regular season for, for you to, to, to bring me on. Um, yeah, big series between St. Cloud State and UMD. Neither team had... Uh, the success they were hoping for the last weekend yeah uh, against those dang colorado teams for, for for people who don't know uh matt uh covers umd for for the duluth news tribune and we we kind of work for the same company for those of you who paid close attention obviously we did we had a podcast last year where we we had a number of sports reporters that were on every monday so this is kind of we're kind of turning the clock back in a ways matt <laughs> yeah, but less uh, skyline chili talk and uh, yeah. stuff like that. That's yes. obviously why that, that's probably why the last podcast got canceled. We spent more time talking about NCHC and Big Ten eateries than we did uh, actual hockey. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's start off by by talking about what what kind of happened this past weekend. Uh, not really a surprise. I I hate to say this, you know, for our friends at Miami, but I mean, it's just kind of been that kind of a season for them. Nebraska Omaha goes in and sweeps Miami. Uh, it was four to three and two to one. So a couple of close games. Uh, you know, my, you know, it's funny because like when you watch Miami, it, it's not like they're the, they're the worst team in the country or anything like that. But the, but in this conference, you know, they're just there's there's a couple of elements that, that seem to be missing with Miami. Yeah, it's just not working. And I'm going to preface this by Chris Bergeron is uh, one of the coaches I've loved working with. And in my 20 years or whatever, it's been a college hockey. I got to see him at Bowling Green when I was covering Northern. Uh, and he came to Marquette a couple of times and upset the the Wildcats at some playoff series. Um, you know, and I, and I remember the team he had in in allentown in in 2019 um that's the team that was the closest to knocking off those back-to-back -back national champion bulldog teams uh and and ending that run um i just haven't seen uh, what he did at bowling green those teams at bowling green we haven't seen those teams at at miami and it's and it's been unfortunate but like this year i don't think they're as bad as their record like there's years where i looked at them and went Ew. This year was not one of those years. It's it's a it's a more competitive team. That the, there's some skill there. They're just it's just not coming together. And um, you know, I remember when I was in Oxford uh, earlier this season, I, it, it sounded like the fans were booing Chris Bergeron when his name was getting announced. And I was like, well, that can't be happening because that's just awful. If if the home fans are doing that to, to their own coach. And, and I saw something this weekend that, yeah, that's indeed what's been happening. And the players gave him a, a pretty resounding stick salute um, one night to try and drown out those, those boos. So um, yeah, it just hasn't come together uh, for Miami under, under Chris Bergeron. And, and I don't know what the future holds there or anything like, like that. Um, you know, for, for Omaha, that's another team that's been, been up and down as, as well again a team i think that's that's better than than their record um i actually think omaha has omaha has a lot of talent they're, they're a little more balanced i think than maybe some some of even the the top teams in the the nchc that rely on one thing or another for for their success um and, and omaha at times hasn't always put it together but it looks like they did this weekend against miami and maybe they're just taking 
advantage. I don't want to say Miami's given up because when you see the players, you know what you heard over the weekend of the the, the stick salute um, for for their coach. Uh, that's that that was cool to to read about. Yeah, uh, yeah. In, in Nebraska, Omaha has been. Uh, again, Simon Lacozzi had a good second half last season, and he's been having a good second half again this season. So anytime you get some good goaltending down the stretch, uh, that, 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 the, that gives you some pause, I guess, if you're, if you're going to face them in, in, in the playoffs, they're, they're going to be, they're going to be a tough opponent for whoever gets them because they, they like to. There's certain team. There's a handful of teams in this league that are kind of similar, you know, and and they're one of them where they're going to bang you around a little bit, right? I mean, they 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 want to play. They have a pretty good goaltender, uh, and, and they're going to play hard all the time. So, I mean, they're they're not going to be an easy out in, in, in this in this tournament. No, and and you mentioned the goaltending for Omaha. That's kind of been their bugaboo at times, right? Like they've had the scoring and and they've been. Uh, good defensively, but maybe not had the the goal t- the goaltending hasn't lived up to expectations. Um, but if they have the goaltending, I think that's for any team in, in the postseason, yeah. right? If you have the goaltending, um, if that's clicking, um, you're gonna you're gonna make a run. Um, you know, and, and we'll mention a few other teams here that maybe you know have the firepower, but not the goaltending, yeah. uh, and 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 such. Um, Omaha again, their history. I don't. Have they won a playoff series yet? In they, in their they history, not, I don't I don't think they they have. I remember them coming again to in the CCHA coming to Marquette with some pretty good teams and, and not being able to to get out of there. And they've had some decent teams here in the NCHC. Um, and so that that's the other thing, right? They got to get over that um, that hump of, of winning a playoff series. Yeah, they had, they had a home playoff series last season against North Dakota. They were the third seed. And it ended up going to three games, and they ended up losing to North Dakota. So, yeah, there's there's some questions there as well. I guess once we get to the postseason, and they're they're in a they're in a tough spot in the pairwise. So they're going to have to w- find a way to win the the NCHC tournament. But anyhow, uh, moving on, uh, North Dakota sweeps Western Michigan. I was I, I was a little bit surprised. Scores were uh, five to three and three to nothing. Um, just because Western is is a team that I, I'm having, they've been uh, they've been up and down as well. At times they look like they can they can run anybody off the ice, and then at, at the same time you look at their record in the conference and they're below 500. Which so there, there's some there's some strange things there, but you know North Dakota keeps. You know, kind of keeps rolling along. I guess that's the other side of that, and and you know, Ludwig Person ends up getting the shutout the second night. Yeah, and 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 Western again is one of those teams that, yeah, offensively, man, are they gifted? They got some really good offensive uh, players there that could score and and such. That's what I saw against them when when they played the Bulldogs. But uh, I, I know Cameron Rowe. I'm looking at the stats that he's second in the NCHC in goals against average and, and second in save percentage, but um, he can be inconsistent at, at times. He's either on when he's on, he's great. When he's not, um, you know, I remember UMD getting some some goals against him that I, I know he'd like to have back in in those games. So, like, that's another question for Western: Can can Cameron Rowe be consistent enough in the postseason to to carry them um, anywhere? And, and North Dakota is just um, they are one of the best teams in the country. I know BC and BU get a get a ton of publicity this year and and such and, and Michigan State, but man, North Dakota's good. They're just solid, right? Ludwig Pearson's uh, just one of the best goaltenders. He's, uh, you know, his confidence is, is definitely back. Um, I think he went through some injuries there for a little bit, which is maybe why he had a bit of a struggle at time, but but he's solid defensively. North Dakota, um, you know, swapping out your entire decor has, has worked out very well for, for them this year. I know a lot of people were questioning, um, but yeah, they got rid of eight defense, but brought in eight new guys and, and they're pretty dang good. And, and again, they just have some, some really good players. Uh, you know, Jackson Blake is a, is a game changer. Um, Reese Gaber and, and, and such, you can go down the line. They're just a really good, solid, complete team. Like that. They won the Penrose cup here. They clinched it going in the last week and they did so because I think from top to bottom, 
they are as complete as as they've been in a in a long long time. Um, now that doesn't always translate to postseason success. Um, you know, the last time I think they had a team this good was uh, f- uh, when they lost the five OTs to to UMD. But um, man, North Dakota's on a, on a run right now. So um, that was just a tough draw, I think, uh, for for Western there. Yeah. Uh, then, then, then the series that you followed uh, closely, uh, Colorado College uh, ends up, th- this was in Colorado Springs. Uh, they end up tying UMD. UMD wins the shootout two to one. Uh, so that kind of that snapped a long losing streak for UMD. And then uh, Colorado College comes back the next night and, and wins four to one. I think the, I, I think the second game w- was unfortunately kind of indicative of a lot of what you've seen with UMD this year, right? Because it was a two to one game. They take a <laughs> they take a penalty late, end up giving up a a power play goal, and you know it ends up three one, and then they get an empty net goal. So I mean it did end up four to one. But that that I I know from following <laughs> stuff that you've been writing, uh, Matt that. That's kind of been the bugaboo, right? They they kind of shoot them, shoot themselves in the foot here a little bit. Yeah, and and it's even more than that. Like to to get to that point on on Saturday, you know, Friday Scott Sandlin called it. For one thing, I want to preface like Colorado College is a really good good team. Yes, I think they're really absolutely. good this year. Um, you know, we talk about Jackson Blake, how he's a game changer. Noah Lava is also a game changer. Is. Man, is he fun to fun to watch? Snapshots off his speed, um, his size, everything. He's he's him and Jackson Blake are, are on another level, I think, of, of the league right now when you look at players. Um, and uh, unfortunately, both are probably maybe on their way out of the league. Well, I guess it depends who you are. If uh, if you appreciate watching good players, they're on their way out. If you're everyone else in the NCHC that wants to stop getting scored on by them, um, it's a good thing. They're probably on their way to the NHL, I think. Maybe. Who knows? Um, we see more guys come back than, than not. But anyways, um, UMD's been where Colorado college has been like the kryptonite to North Dakota this year. Yeah. UMD has kind of been the kryptonite to, to, to CC. Um, it's been an interesting, even matchup. Uh, they both went to OT when they were in Duluth. Um, and then this weekend, it seemed like it was happening again, right? UMD plays a really good, probably their best game in the second half on, on Friday. Um, and then Saturday, it just doesn't come together. And the problem that we've seen with UMD all year is just, not a commitment to to puck possession and taking care of the puck. You know, UMD was able to to put together some really good shifts on on Friday, possessing the puck, you know, keeping it out of their own zone, dominating the neutral zone. Um, and we saw it in flashes on Saturday, and that's been the problem, right? Like they score the goal on their their one goal on on Saturday comes from their third line. Um, and people that remember those net back-to-back championship runs, like um, actually, it wasn't the third line; it was the fourth line. It was Braden Fisher's line. Um, him and Kyler Clevin and Luke uh, Johnson just did a great job possessing the puck. UMD is able to rotate in some fresh forwards, and that included Matt Perkins, who fires a, a rifle of a shot down the middle to to beat uh, Caden Emberko, who, who's been solid this year as, as well. Um, we talk about goaltenders and. Then that disappeared. They just start throwing pucks away, turning the puck over, losing battles, getting stuck in their own zone, um, and then penalties at at you know bad times and and such, and then um, dumb penalties uh, after that to not allow you to get back into the uh, the game, even though it's you know they're only yeah they gave up the power play goal. Uh, you know Scott Sandlin called it questionable against uh, Luke Bass there that led to that power play goal that turned a two one game into three one, but. This has been the killer we've seen in the last few weeks is instead of then trying to bounce back from that and get two extra attacker goals, which UMD did this year, they got two extra attacker goals against Denver um, to send that game into to OT. Um, they, they take two penalties and are now killing a five on three in the closing minutes. And you don't get that extra attacker chance and, anymore. And um, you try and get an extra attacker and give up a goal. And it's just, just a meltdown like that. And, um, it's it's frustrating for Scott Sandlin to watch. It's frustrating for a beat writer to write the same story and have to ask the same questions of, of coach and players after a game. So, um, yeah, it's been an, an interesting year for for UMD. But um, you know, even if they don't take those penalties, I don't I don't know if they beat Colorado College on on Saturday. But I think it's an easier loss to stomach uh, a two to one defeat against you know 
Um, and Berko, who's playing solid, is, is definitely once again one of the the better goalies uh, in in the league. And then um, CC, they're a good team defensively, and and they got an elite goal scorer in, in Noah Laba, and that's that's huge. And his line is as a, as a whole is is really strong as well. Yeah, v- Varemyev is really good too. I mean, the- <laughs> right? Yeah, and he was a pest. He he got under a lot of the bulldog skins. <laughs> The, this this weekend he did a, a very good job of that but um heck of a story at, in in Colorado Springs right to see all all this this happening under Chris Mayotte's uh you know third season if you're one of the if you're like me that likes rooting for for stories and such to see CC um you know in contention for a home playoff series um heard a lot of fans talking about that there's a lot of buzz about them hosting a playoff series and then uh, them and the pairwise as as well, uh, maybe trying to get back to the NCAA tournament. Um, that is as well. There's there's a lot of buzz around around town uh, about that team and and that story right now. Um, I had heard in passing somebody said they saw a tweet that that Ben Steves got a little bit banged up in that in that game on Saturday. Is that did you see that or? or? Uh, yeah, he he took a he took a a couple hits. Uh, was was slow to get up from, but uh, w- was back out there and, and finished. So yeah, he seems okay. he seems uh, he seems okay. He finished that that game. So all right. Uh, then the series that I saw, um, in, in the the score in the second game is is kind of a is a bit deceiving. But the first game was definitely what the score says. It was six to two for for Denver in the opener. Uh, Denver scored three goals in the first, I think it was 10 and a half minutes of that game. <laughs> so Matt, uh, just picture this. So they, like they scored, I think their second goal at, uh, I don't know, it was around the six, six and a half minute mark already. So it's two to nothing and Brett Larson takes a timeout. So that's an indicator that <laughs> not a good sign. Not a good, no, not, no, not, not good no, when you're burning no, it that quick. So, so they give up the third goal and they made a goalie change. Um, so that was just kind of the way that that night, you know, kind of ended up going. Although, uh, you know, they, they kind of got back into that game a little bit in, in you know, in, in the later stages of it. But, uh, you know, Denver is really, really talented. I, I as Offensively, good as they offensively make they got to be and i've watched you know i've only seen bu and bc on on television um and i and maybe i'd put both those teams up there as, as well but denver's got some of the best goal scorers and sh- they got some of the best shooters in the country man they got shooters those guys can fire the puck and they did it against umd too you know got up early on them um denver's bugaboo and uh they held strong this weekend against st cloud this did not happen when they played UMD uh, and they let the Bulldogs back. They'll score quick, but they give up goals yeah. quick uh, to, you know, they need the goal support because um, defensively, you know, it's hard to tell about Matt Davis. Uh, he, he, he gives up, uh, he gives up goals and um, you know, I saw him give up a couple soft ones uh, against UMD, but he also doesn't get a lot of um defensive su- support and uh david carl was not happy uh, a couple of weeks ago when when denver gave up those two extra attacker goals and yeah his team still won in in overtime but um was not happy that they weren't able to win that one in regulation because defensively they just weren't very good and um yeah denver can score man they can shoot they got some just tremendous shooters on that team they're fun to watch but defensively that's what worries me about that team uh yeah. Come come postseason, especially once you get into the NCAA tournament when it when it's one and done, and um, we see teams. Well, Denver, Denver is a great example in years past, right? That made deep runs in the NCAA tournament and won national championships by grinding out teams two to one, three to two, stuff like that. Right, and they, and, and they are fast. I mean, they've they've so got fast. they have got some guys that can just get up and down the ice. I mean, Z Booyum on on defense. In addition to being fun to say his his name, yes, both the, mean, both the Williams. Yeah, really good skater can really handle the puck. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it, for his it, his size and everything. I mean, I uh, yeah, he's he's the complete complete package of of a of a NHL prospect right there. You're right. I mean, he's he, and it's hard to believe he just turned eighteen, and it's actually mind blowing that he's just eighteen because he. 
he's going to be a top – I think he's going to be in the top five draft pick. I think I saw a dozen – NHL scouts this weekend at the at the St. Cloud State Series. Uh, yeah, there were like I think there were 16 one night in in Duluth as as well, and and people were asking, "What? Who, wonder who they're here to watch?" And I said, "It's it's it's Zeev Booyam. It's not not necessarily a Ben Steves or any other uh, prospects on a, on any of these teams, free agents. The, everyone's there to watch uh, uh, Zeev Booyam. Yeah, he attracts yeah. he attracts a crowd uh, wherever he goes." So the the second game, Denver ends up uh, picking up the sweep with a seven to two, seven to two win. But there was a point; it, it was one to nothing. This was weird. Uh, so uh, they they Saint Cloud State I, had outshot them ten to one, and were down. They were down one to nothing. They they had. <laughs> the, the, uh, this was early in the well, actually kind of later in the first period, and. Literally, I think it was with fourteen twenty. It's in my story, or whatever. I think it was like with fourteen at the fourteen twenty mark. Denver had two shot attempts in this in the first period, and they were up one nothing. Uh, St. Cloud State had a kind of a a tough turnover, and ends up being like a three on one, and they score on a rush shocker with with Denver. But uh, but anyway, so the the, the next night though. Yeah, you know, or the, we're talking about Saturday night. What am I thinking? Uh, so it's one nothing going into the second period. They go up two to nothing. St. Cloud State gets a power play. Uh, they don't score. They had some decent chances. They don't score. Like 30 seconds after the power play expires, Denver comes down and scores, and it was three to nothing. And, uh, you know, Brent Larson said after the game that was kind of a backbreaker for us. Uh, and it was three nothing going into the third, and then St. Cloud State actually played pretty well for about five six minutes, and then they had to start taking some chances. And then you take chances with Denver, and it, you know they just score. turn it right around on you in transition, and, and yeah, and that's and what it, score fast. They can give up goals quick, but they also score score goals quick. They score lightning quick. <laughs> I mean, they yeah. they they turn things around as quick as anybody out there. So. Anyway, a, a tough weekend for for St. Cloud State. A, obviously, a really good weekend for Denver. Uh, Denver, as we take a look at the standings, you know, UND wrapped up the the Penrose. Uh, they've got a seven point lead going into uh, the last weekends uh, of of the regular season. Denver moves up into second. They move past St. Cloud State, so they've got forty two points. They're two points ahead of St. Cloud State. And then uh, Colorado College is two points behind St. Cloud State, so uh, so that that's pretty tight. Omaha's the the one team that has a chance to get home ice still, technically. <laughs> they need it. so we're you know again uh, hanging out with the the CC people doing the math uh, and such. It looks like they need uh, with tiebreakers uh, they're going to need eleven or they need five point. They need. They're four back at Colorado College. They're going to need to take, uh, you know, at least five, if not sweep North Dakota. It, you know, depending on what CC does against Denver, and and CC, despite their uh, revival, is is still uh, struggling against uh, their their big rival in Denver. There, so um, yeah, four points uh, seems like a lot for Omaha to to catch CC at this point. Yep, and then uh, Western Michigan's three points uh, behind Omaha in in sixth place. And then uh, UMD at, at 23. So UMD is UMD's UMD locked, locked into seven. seventh. Yeah. And Miami's locked into eighth. So we know those two things. We so know Miami, Miami at we know Miami at North Dakota in the NCHC quarterfinals, and, and that's it at this point. Yes, absolutely. Uh and then we're kind of, and then just taking a quick look at the pairwise. So with that big uh sweep for for Denver, they move into a tie with North Dakota for third in the pairwise. Colorado College moves up. Uh, moves back up again. Uh, they're they're uh, tied for eleventh, so th- that was a good weekend for them. Now they've got- yeah, they really seem to seesaw depending on on the result up and up and down uh, uh, for them. That's a roller coaster their fan base is going through right now in the pairwise. <laughs> and and St. Cloud State keeps seeming to to vary between eleven and fourteen. This week they're at fourteen, and then Western Michigan's at fifteen. Uh, and I, boy, for as good a team as I think Western Michigan is, it, it, it's a little, it's just the, their conference, 
you know, their conference records just kind of hurt them. Um, and then Omaha's in a tie for 16. Uh, UMD's at 28. And then Miami's at 46. So, uh, which is still better than most of the CCHA. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I've I've joked this year when, when people ask about UMD, and I said, "Oh, they'd win the CCHA." I I actually think Miami might have won the CCHA, uh, the this this year if, if they were in that. When we talk about like their their talent level, and, and again, I, I I like to joke UMD is the CCHA champions because they went through Tech, Northern, and, and Bemidji at the the beginning of the year and were were unbeaten against uh, those those three teams. So, um. Yeah, it's it's a tough year for the CCHA, but that's for another podcast, I guess. Yeah, when you look at the NCHC, we talk about you know UMD and Mi- Miami struggling this year. They're struggling in the NCHC. Well, Miami's struggling overall, but they're they're still you know forty six in the pairwise. UMD, it's it's surprising, you know, in the in the twenties in the pairwise. You'd think they'd be you know towards the bottom and or uh, maybe in the the thirties or forties, and they're not. They're still twenty six. It's it's still a strong year for the, for the NCHC and in, in the pairwise when you look at when we're talking about, you know, sixth place, you know, fifth place Omaha and sixth place Western being on, on the bubble there, mm-hmm. um, you know, St. Cloud's in a tough spot at, at 14, obviously. And, and then CC, you know, it's, it's not the traditional pairwise, right? Where you have multiple NCHC teams in the top 10, a lot of teams on fighting on the bubble. And, and I think that's what all of a sudden makes this last week of the regular season. I know there's not a ton on the line standings wise anymore, you know, Colorado College probably trying to get home ice here is probably the biggest thing. Um, trying to hold off Omaha. Um, everyone's jockeying for for pairwise position this week, right? Like St. Cloud UMD is a big series because St. Cloud needs these two wins to to stay afloat in the, in the the pairwise. Um, Omaha needs to find a way to get a win at North Dakota to uh, that would help them take a big jump. Man, if CC could get a win over Denver, that that would help them maybe. You know, end this roller coaster that that they're on. Um, mm-hmm. Western taking on Miami, yep. don't don't slip up there. They're gonna go. You know, they could go tumbling. So that it's we're in we're out, we're more in pairwise season, and I think you're gonna see that too once we get to the the conference tournament and these best of three series. Um, yeah, everyone's gonna tell you we're chasing an NCHC championship, but in reality, they're playing for their their lives because. Uh, if you get bounced in the first round in the NCHC quarterfinals, your season's probably done. Yeah. Uh, so we take a look ahead here a little bit to this week's games, and there's there's some there's some some interesting matchups. And the the one that is really interesting to me is the Denver and Colorado College have a home and home. Uh, for people who remember back to last season, <laughs> Colorado College shut out Denver one to nothing in the in the NCHC semifinals. Uh, and Caden and Barico was on a, a, a terrific run uh, in the postseason. Got them past Western Michigan in the in the opening round. Got them all the way to the championship game. And it certainly wasn't his fault that you know they ended up losing to Saint Cloud State because he he was as good as advertised. That CC team not as deep as this one. I think that's one of the things that strikes me about this year's Colorado College team is. One, they've got more scoring depth, and and two, there's just uh, there's more of a feeling of the, they're not just playing defense all the time. I mean, do, do you agree with that? Uh, oh yeah, they're they're definitely a team that that can go on on the attack, and and that top line led by Laba is definitely um, a big part of that. It, it's a team that can can attack, and I think that's what you have to do against Denver. Um, you can't sit back and, and be passive against them because their shooters are so good. If you get, you said it in that St. Cloud game, right? What they had one goal on, on two shots. Yeah. Um, and they'll do that to, to even the best goalies in this league. So you can't sit back against Denver. You got to attack. You got to push back. You got to possess the puck and uh, CC can do that. And that's what makes them um, a team that could, you know, especially if Caden and Berko is playing at his best. Um, if they can get into the, you know, those one and done games, they're they're going to be they're going to be interesting. I don't think last year was a fluke of them being at at the X and and making the you know a run at a NCHC postseason title. I, there's definitely the potential there to to do that this season, but they need to. I think they got to lock up home ice, um, find a way to get a couple points against Denver this weekend, um, and then uh, you know we'll see once they get into the 
the postseason as well. I know their fan base had, had kind of talked about um, Omaha and Western can can be a bit of a bugaboo for them, but but Omaha and Western could be a bugaboo for for a lot of yeah. a lot of teams. I wouldn't count either one of those out, and maybe that's why the the battle for second between Denver and St. Cloud is is interesting. I'm not saying UMD is going to be an easy out, but um, you know the way the Bulldogs haven't been able to play consistently enough over back to back games. Um, you know, probably gives you a, a better yeah. chance than you know. Yeah. You're you're gonna want to play the Bulldogs maybe more than you'll want to play Western and and, and Omaha at at this week. Um, yeah. But we'll we'll see. Maybe we'll see uh, again. Uh, it'll be you know if UMD could start putting back to back games together, it'll it'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I, there are some intriguing battles in in there. That CC Denver is it's just a fun rivalry too, right? Like. Sure. That's why it's it's great that the league has these rivalry partners um, closing the year against each other. Uh, some right. are, are bigger rivals than others <laughs> in this league, but Denver and CC definitely uh, not fans of each other. Yeah, no. And, and, and to me, I mean, when, when you start looking at who's going to be the MVP of, of the NCHC, I mean, Embarico's – He's got to be considered. I mean, when you look at the numbers and where the where they are in the standings, I mean, if you take let's put it this way, you take Ken and Barico out of that, <laughs> off that team, where are they? I mean, it, it, it's better it, as much as I think they're a better team overall than they were last season. But if you take him out of that lineup, you look at some of the wins that he's had recently with over forty saves. Um, I think he, he might. He's going to get strong. I should hope he's getting strong consideration for MVP of the league because he's that good. Yeah, he is. He he is. And and you know, unlike maybe Western or Denver, who can outscore you. Yeah, CC can can score some some goals, but not not at the the length that North Dakota, Denver, and and Western can, or or even you know, Omaha is a team that can put the puck in the net as as well. So uh, they need their goaltending. To 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 be good, and and Emberco doesn't have to go posting shutouts ev- every no. night. As long as he's you know he can give up a goal or two, and and CC for the most part can can overcome it. So um, that's what what makes them uh, you know that's what you're right. It, it does when you look at value, when you look at most valuable player, the most valuable player to their team. Um, there's a strong strong argument that that Emberco's the the guy. Yeah, because, okay, so then you take the other side of that argument. Well, okay, who's the best player on the best team? Well, I, it, that's a tougher sell for me, I guess. I mean, I, I guess you'd say Jackson Blake. At, yeah, at I'd say Jack, Jackson, Jackson Blake at, at North Dakota, I think, is he's, but he's, there's even, a, he's like, definitely. But you could, I mean, when you talk about value, though, you know, same, you know, Jack Devine and, and that at, at, at Denver, um, you know, you could maybe take those guys away and their rosters are deep enough. Yeah, yeah. the best player, um, Jackson Blake's up there. Noah Laba is actually up there too, I think, is, yeah. is one of the most talented players in, in the league right now. Zeev Booyam, definitely, we talked about him yeah. um, as as a really talented player. So, yeah, it's a little tighter once you start talking about, about talent compared to um, value. Yeah. Uh, North Dakota at Omaha, this is... Uh, this is a interesting series because now North Dakota's, not, you know, North Dakota's not playing. Let's be honest; they're not playing for anything at this point. There's going to be, you know, now they're coming off the big high of of wrapping up the the Penrose with with the with the sweep. At the same time, I mean, Nebraska Omaha, uh, you know, is is a team that is going to be playing for a lot, right? I mean, they they still got a shot at at home ice. Uh, they're sitting in a tough spot in the Parawise. So, I mean, as you were mentioning, I think earlier, I mean, if, if Omaha is able to at least get a win or let's say they get four points out of it, that'd be huge for them. Yeah. North Dakota will be interesting to see how they, they approach this. Obviously pairwise positioning their North Dakota is playing for, for a top seed, uh, I guess at, at this point to ensure they can, uh, be in, in Sioux Falls, but otherwise, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Is is anyone banged up? Do you hold them out of this series for the playoffs? Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how North Dakota approaches. We've seen them have their win the Penrose one night and have a letdown the the next night, but before and such. So, um, 
Yeah. And Omaha, how desperate are they? You know, how, how much are they going to be fired up to try and stay in, in the chase for home ice? Um, as well as, uh, you know, how hungry are they for an NCAA tournament? Yep. Uh, I, I, I'd be, uh, I'd be surprised if Omaha doesn't, you know, you always take that team, like who's the most desperate when, when you yeah. go into a series sometime, like who's the most desperate, who needs that win more than anyone. And and I think Omaha could, could steal one from North Dakota this weekend. I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I mean, with like the way like cozy has been playing and just because of their style of play, right. I mean, they're, they're not going to, Generally speaking, Omaha's not uh, – they're going to be in the game, right? I mean, they're not going to get blown out by people. You know, I, it's rare that you see them uh, where that happened. Now, I saw them keep coming back against St. Cloud State earlier this season. So, I mean, I, that's kind of stuck in my mind uh, with how they play. So, yeah, it's an interesting series. For Miami at Western Michigan um, – now Miami's interestingly enough, Miami's one win in the conference this season is against Western Michigan, um, and and again uh, for 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 Miami sitting there with one win in the conference, I they're I don't rule out that they could. And Western, to be quite honest with you, has not been good at home. So I mean, I, I don't rule out that that Miami could steal a win here this weekend. No, and when we talk about like rivalries in the NCHC, that's that's one that's also a little more, um, you know, heated. I'd say just because of their history going back to the the CCHA and such, they're they're pretty close in proximity. So, um, yeah, I I think uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to, to to see there again. Western playing for their lives. Miami might be a little. Maybe their players are getting fired up now that uh, people are, you know, talking about, you know, a, a possible coaching change and, and stuff and, and that program's getting hammered on. So it'd be interesting to see how, how their players respond and 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 such. Um, but, yeah, it, it's always interesting when teams are in this spot, right? Like what direction, like a Miami, what direction are they going to go? Are, are you... Are guys already thinking about what's next uh, in their, their hockey careers or are they uh, committed to finishing strong? Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you posted the, posted this question, who, who's your, who, who's UMD's biggest rival? Well, I, I'd say it's St. Cloud State, right? Yeah, well, it, it's, yeah, you know, part of me, you know, the Packers fan in me often equates it to, uh, you know, it's funny when I, I've lived in Michigan and Minnesota and hearing the perspective of Lions and, and Vikings fans like I don't know is St. Cloud State consider UMD its its biggest rival I mean in the NCHC they're big rivals and there's been some playoff battles and such but um you know I I think UMD fans get more jacked up for uh North Dakota and and Minnesota though they don't play Minnesota as much you know North Dakota and UMD have had some epic playoff battles over the years I feel like the St. Cloud State rivalry is there there's some like mutual respect and admiration too between the the two, so you're looking for a two, hated. You're looking for a hated. yeah. If you're looking for it, I don't think UMD St. Cloud is a is a heated hated rivalry. At least that's my perspective. Like, it's two smaller schools, um, you know, who are both trying to gang up. Like, I, I think UMD fans might maybe actually root for St. Cloud when they're not playing St. Cloud, um, and, and you know, maybe it helps because Brett Larson's there now, a Denfeld guy. Like, people want to root for Lars and. He was a popular guy here as a player and assistant coach and and such because um, Lars is just an overall nice, nice, nice guy. At least he's been to, to, to me mm -hmm. um, and such. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting rivalry. Um, it'll be interesting if they end up playing each other for a third consecutive year in the NCHC quarterfinals. But I don't think like NCHC quarterfinal series build a rivalry as much as maybe matchups in a frozen face-off title game, which they've, they've had, they've had those as, as well, or, or NCAA tournament and, and such. I think NCAA tournaments, when you can end a team season at that point, it's, it's, it's significant. Yeah. Uh, so, so it sounds like Ben Steve's going to be okay. Obviously that's a huge, again, if you're talking about, <laughs> value <laughs> value right yeah ben's that's where their offense drives through getting him the puck on, on the power play for the most part so um you know when he's not scoring it's it's tough for umd 
Yeah. Uh, and, and St. Cloud State obviously needs they, – they need – they need some points this weekend, one way or another. Not only from a pairwise standpoint, but uh, you know, I, I don't know that they really want to drop down any farther in, in the standings either. So, I mean, there, there's kind of a combo platter there. They they need some positive momentum going into the playoffs. So, I it's I don't know. I mean, it, okay, who's the most desperate team? I don't I don't know. I don't know if I have an answer there because obviously. UMD's going through a really tough stretch right now. Yeah, I think UMD's in the same boat as Miami, right? Like, are, are they desperate to try and finish their season strong and maybe build some momentum going into the playoffs and, and go on a postseason run? Um, you know, we saw UMD as a five seed that one year win the frozen faceoff after going into St. Cloud and winning. We saw North Dakota last year when everyone counted them out going to Omaha and, and, and you know, give themselves a shot like does umd want that shot or are guys like have they conceded this is this is the end you know this is what we are this year and guys have either moved on to the next point in their career or moved on to next season like what do they want to do you know friday at dc i would have told you hey these guys are still motivated to, to change things and and turn it around and saturday it was like well maybe they were content getting the, the tie i don't know um it, it's tough to to read sometimes um what what's what's happening there with 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 umd so um i think this will be an interesting weekend they're back home at amsoil arena this could be the last um time a lot of these guys play it at, at, at amsoil whether it's fifth year seniors like luke lowheight and, and quinn olson who began their careers you know as part of those teams chasing a three-peat um and then you got guys like zach stayskull and blake biondi and daria goats who I don't. I don't know if they're going to be back for for fifth years or or not. When you look at what UMD has lined up recruiting wise, it looks like maybe this could be the the end for those guys. And they're three Northeast Minnesota uh, natives: Biondi and Herman, uh, Biondi and Goats from Hermantown, Stasco from Grand Rapids. Could be their last time playing um, in in Northeast Minnesota in their hockey careers. So, um, you know, what's the motivation? Do you guys want to finish out strong? Uh, that, that's what you're wondering. With, with UMD this weekend. St. Cloud's obviously motivated, right? They want to get second in the NCHC. Um, losses to the 26th team in the pairwise is not going to look good. St. Cloud wants to get back to the NCAA tournament. They have a lot to play for. This is still a very um, you know, meaningful series in that aspect. So uh, you're right. It's curious what desperation will, will look like. Yep. Well, th thanks to thanks to you, Matt. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time, and uh, we'll, we'll be uh, an interesting weekend. I I wish I was going up to Duluth for this series, uh, but I will be down, <laughs> I'll be down in the State Boys Hockey Tournament. Uh, so uh, so if people are are looking for you know the the minute to minute updates uh, on on the games in this series, I'd, I'd suggest uh, checking out Matt on uh, social media at Matt Wellens on, on Twitter. And uh, thanks again though, Matt, uh, it's always fun talking hockey with you. Yeah. Yeah. Follow uh, on, on all the socials. Uh, I don't, uh, I admit I don't do the, the play by play as, as much and anymore. Uh, I've, I've gone old school and I, I watched the games um, <laughs> instead of staring at my computer for, for 60 minutes, but yeah. Uh, threads, Instagram, uh, Twitter, there's some occasional updates during the, the games. Uh, there for Huskies fans that are that are looking for stuff. All right. This has been the NCHC Icecast. Please check us out uh, next week. And then also please check out all of our great content on the rinklive.com.